What no one will tell you about Tarte Cosmetics, specifically Tarte Cosmetics skincare, from the elaborate gifts that are sent out in PR to influencer brand trips, to the fact that Tarte actually used to donate to the Amazon rainforest back when they first started, literally in 1999. 20 years ago, and the fact that the founder was actually working on her psychology PhD. Ribbit, ribbit, croak, croak. I've been in the industry for 10 years and I've seen a lot in professional offices and in the influencer world, but at the end of the day, I started off as a consumer first. I believe that people should have access to brands that match their morals and values and also benefit their skin. And that's why I dig into these products and try to figure out what's in them from both an ingredient perspective and from a brand perspective to help you make empowered and inspired choices. Tarte skincare is actually a very interesting story, but it really starts with their makeup line, which is how I first heard about them. In 1999, Kelly was a girl who was working on her PhD in psychology in New York at Columbia University, and while she was there, she found that she didn't have access to makeup that made her look glamorous but that had more natural ingredients. And this just kind of blows my mind because I never really thought of Tarte being this old, but like that's where they go back to. It started out with her, I think, mixing products in her apartment, and it started with a cheek stain. It kind of reminds me of Benefit in that sense, only Benefit did a nipple stain. So so if you didn't know that, now you do. This cheek stain ended up getting into the hands of a lot of editors at magazines back then. And back then, magazines were like the tell-all for beauty because YouTube didn't exist. Wow, that's crazy. And the line started to get a bit of popularity. I believe that Kelly got either a loan or money or funding or just support from her first husband. And she started selling in a store called Henry Bendel. I remember first walking down the New York streets and looking at the Henry Bendel store. It's like a high-end, I think, jewelry store. But I remember the first time I saw it, I read it as Henry Blender. Yeah, that's dyslexia for you. <laughs> Anyways, they were sold in this store, and it wasn't until later on they actually got put in Sephora and QVC. And I look at Tarte and I'm like, wow, I would not think of you as a QVC brand. But then I kind of look at some of their recent stuff and I'm like, oh yeah, you're going back to bases, aren't you? <laughs> that's where it started. It started to grow within Sephora. I actually first found it in Sephora. I purchased so many of their products. I think almost every single blush they had, I wasted my money and my credit card debt on them because I was impressed by the way they worked for my skin. But again, this was the makeup, not the skincare. And I think that's what really catapulted them to the point that they got acquired for $135 million back in 2015. This Japanese company kind of took over. And again, as a consumer, I noticed at this point that the makeup quality had started to go down. But it wasn't totally killing me at that point, and I was kind of stepping away from buying as much makeup. But if you notice, this 2015 acquisition from this Japanese company is also when they started creating other products and other lines, specifically, their skincare line came out. On top of that, a lot of people don't know they launched sister lines. There's a brand called Awake. Nobody talks about the fact that Awake is a Japanese-inspired brand that is actually from Tarte Cosmetics. Same with Sugar Rush, which is listed on Tarte Cosmetics' website. It's basically like a younger preteen version of Tarte Cosmetics. And they do a really, I don't know if you want to say good job or desperate job at wooing influencers. Even my pop socket, I got this at a Sugar Rush event. So the whole thing about Tarte Cosmetics is this high performance naturals. That's what all of their products always said, and I believe that's kind of what they were going for with skincare as well. But what's funny is that it's written all over the makeup and it's not written all over the skincare. Now, I am actually a huge fan of some of their skincare products, and I actually hate some of the others. And this is the not so pretty truth that people won't tell you. Specifically when it comes to some of the packaging problems and the exorbitant waste of plastic that I feel goes completely against what Kelly started Tarte Cosmetics for. When it comes to the quality that nobody will talk about. When it comes to the elaborate gifts that influencers are given that people don't share very often. And something that people did talk about was the concealer scandal. Basically this horrible representation or lack of representation when it comes to people who wear makeup. I didn't really put the dates together until I was doing research for this video, but I realized that when I stopped buying Tarte Cosmetics so much, and when I felt the quality went down, was kind of 2016. And that would make sense because it was right after that acquisition. Again, when these big companies take over, the brand still exists, but they could have their entire teams inside replaced, they could use different manufacturing facilities, they could rebrand the brand, or they could keep it going. Tarte just kind of felt like fast fashion. They were churning out makeup products so quickly, they were popping up with a skincare line, 
then they had this awake Japanese line, then they had this sugar rush line, and it was like, wow, this is a lot. And not all of it works super well, like I remember it used to. Also, the eyeshadow palettes started to get flimsy and a little bit cheap. The color payoff was still pretty good, but like the component, the packaging was just kind of gross. And that's when I stopped purchasing them as much, but there are still cult favorites that I either buy or I get in PR because like this thing right here, this is my absolute favorite and it works like a dream and it's $14. Thank you. When it comes to the Tarte Knockout skincare line, I was actually very impressed with this. I broke this down ingredient by ingredient out in the backyard in a video that I posted a couple years ago. I'll link it to you right here. I would highly recommend you watch it, but overall I'm very impressed with the Knockout skincare. This right here is the Blemish Bully. It has salicylic acid and it's like a spot treatment for pimples, but it doesn't dry you out. It also has azelaic acid. It's very hydrating and it is one of the only non-drying spot treatments that I know of. This is one of my favorites. The toner is actually really good. It's not made with a bunch of crap. It's not irritating. It is pH balanced with 10% acid. I love this stuff and I do highly recommend it. But there are other products that Tarte came out with, such as their vitamin C serum that was a little bit questionable, specifically when it comes to the packaging. I have a personal Acne Warriors Facebook group and it's a community that is private because we discuss sensitive topics such as acne and skin and products. Sometimes I go on like rants of either positive or like, what the hell is this brand doing? There was one day that Tarte Cosmetics really got me confused. I started opening up one of the vitamin C serums. I noticed that by the end of my usage of it, it had started to turn colors, which is a little bit of an indicator that it's probably oxidized, meaning like breaking down. But I was trying to get the last bits of this product out of the jar because I don't want to waste my money. And I noticed how horribly it was packaged. There was like a small component inside of the larger plastic component. It was completely cheap. Cheap. The fill size was so tiny and I was like, this is such a waste of money and resources. And especially looking at Tarte Cosmetics literally starting with their Amazonian rainforest claims and Kelly starting the brand donating to the Amazon rainforest. How can this company contribute to plastic waste like this? I was just really disgusted by that. And I feel like a lot of people aren't talking about that. I haven't ripped this one open either, but like when I look at it, like I wonder, it feels really heavy. Is this just super thick plastic or is it actually completely full? It's quite concerning to me. This one I would say is like the most sustainably packaged because it's not a whole bunch of BS. <laughs> On top of that, there are some of their products that I don't like. They have this vitamin C under eye cream. I think it's horrible. It's disgusting. They have some facial oils that are pretty good. They have one that is infused with gold flex. Really doesn't do anything to your skin. It's just bougie, but it does feel kind of fun to like rub in the little gold specks into your skin and then look at them under a microscope because we did that. This is a product that I was also kind of iffy about. It's the Tight and Bright Clay Mask. I liked the clay part, the pink part. Oh, it's starting to go bad. I liked this side, but then this side that's like trying to be gold glitter just didn't do anything for my skin. And that's why, again, ever since this acquisition, I feel like some of their products are really, really good, but others are just kind of gimmicky. And I never thought of Tarte as like a hit and miss brand, but with their skincare, it is kind of hit and miss, to be totally honest. There is, of course, the huge concealer issue, which was heavily covered. And again, this isn't totally about makeup, but I do wanna to touch on this because it dives into a deeper issue. Who made this mistake? Knowing that Tarte is owned by this Japanese conglomerate, is this like the high levels that made this mistake? Was it the marketing department that made this mistake? Was it the research and development? Who was it? And that's what I wanna know because it was a horrible representation, it wasn't even a representation of color. They basically launched a bunch of their best-selling Tarte cosmetics shape tape concealers and only catered to like three skin tones. And people who had very dark skin tones and need cosmetics that work as well as the Shape Tape Concealer does were not represented. From the outside, it looks like Tarte Cosmetics didn't want people of certain ethnicities to use their products. Because when you think, if people are using their products, they're gonna post about them. That's great because it's exposure for the brand. But if you're trying to keep this very tight view of what your branding looks like, think of Abercrombie and Fitch, who specifically doesn't make sizes for larger people because they don't want larger people wearing their sizes. I just don't get it. It. That's the kind of way a company can control the look 
of their brand and feel. And it's very shady, or not shady, because there are no shades, and it's pretty disgusting. The question is, was it deliberate or was it on accident? And the reason I say that is because then they tried to fix the problem by doing an extended release of colors and saying, oh, we didn't mean to, it was an accident. Their extended release of colors was just as bad. It still didn't include the shades that people with real skin would need to use. It was just kind of like shaking your head. At this point, Rihanna and Fenty had already launched their 40 Shades of Foundation. Tarte is not a small startup brand. They have the capital and the money to make sure that everybody is included. So why did they not do that in the first place? And then when they tried to fix the scandal, why was their bandage just as horrendous? I am very confused. I get that that's makeup, not skincare, but the reason it ties in is because these things are all combined. This is the same company. What is the thought process or what is going on behind the scenes that is allowing this to happen? That's what's going through my head. The other thing that isn't publicized unless it's turned into drama are the influencer trips. Now let me tell you, Tarte Cosmetics PR is bomb. They have some of the best PR packages out there. They have memes on the inside of the box, so like it makes you laugh. They're very shareable, they're very elaborate. Again, there's a lot of plastic waste and a lot of packaging, which isn't cool. I haven't gotten a lot of their PR recently for that specific reason, but the PR packaging is impressive to say the least. On a personal note, the most expensive thing they ever sent me was a pair of $170 shoes. Their knockout line was like knockout breakouts and they sent boxing gloves. They actually had an event, but Los Angeles was on fire at the time. Rightfully, they didn't want people breathing in all of that smoke, so they canceled the event and just sent everybody the goodies, which I was very grateful to receive. I feel very happy that I was able to grow as a person. I'm a little bit older, I'm 27, but I was able to grow as a person before the influencer world completely ate me up, chewed me up, and spat me out. I feel very blessed that I'm able to separate work or product from a person, because again, a person has worth intrinsically. Even if you do something wrong when it comes to a project or or make a mistake or a bad product, I'm really happy that I've learned to distinguish those two and not tie them together. At the same time, I've kind of done that with beauty brands. I feel a little bit proud of myself, a little bit strong that I can distinguish a bad product from a good PR kit. And I don't let gifts or monetary value or even sponsorships get in the way of my honest opinions. That's something that I don't talk about a lot, but like as a person, I'm proud of that. Because 10 years ago, younger me did not understand that, did not have that moral compass. It's something that I am very proud of. And again, this is not targeted at anyone specifically, but I do have to say that there are a lot of gifts that Tarte sends influencers. And sometimes it makes me wonder if that impacts the kind of reviews that come out of people's mouths. This is something that I, as a consumer who have spent tons of money and got myself into credit card debt to buy products, genuinely wonders. And that's hard to say because I don't want the influencer world to be like that, but the truth is that it is. And again, I've only been invited to the small Tarte Cosmetics parties. Again, like the Sugar Rush one. The ones that I'm familiar with are literally like a party, whether it's at a club or even a warehouse that they decorate. They're there's like games or events within this and they have product everywhere and they're just gifting it to you left and right. And don't get me wrong, it is fun. The whole point is Instagram it, share it, enjoy it, and promote our products. Now that's one level of influencer events. Then there's the second level, which is like your trips to Tahiti or Bora Bora or wherever it was. Again, I didn't keep up with it. I wasn't invited. I'm not salty about that. I understand. I don't push Tarte Cosmetics in a way that makes them a ton of money that merits them sending me on that kind of a trip. I know that there was some sort of influencer drama on it. I don't know the details. At the end of the day, it looked like people had a lot of fun. The products did look pretty sweet, but when influencers are sent on these types of trips, they normally have to post that it was sponsored or that they're on a branded trip. That is FTC, Federal Trade Commission guidelines. And usually when brands are spending $3,000 on a plane ticket for an influencer, they write that into the contract that says you're gonna post six times a day or three times a day because it gets viewership for Tarte Cosmetics. Six times a day, you're going to tag the brand's handle in the post because you see it gets them exposure and that's what they want. It doesn't matter if someone's using their makeup or just posing naked on the beach. If it's tagged Tarte Cosmetics, it still gets them brand recognition. And like, that's just how branding works. That's why when I say car insurance, you think of Geico. When I say phones, you think of AT&T and Verizon because their branding is so omnipresent, it's so multi-channel that they've established themselves in that way. When you think of Band-Aid or 
Post-its, those are actual brands, but we think of them synonymously with the product. Kleenex is a tissue. And that, in a way, is what Tarte Cosmetics and these companies with this kind of money are trying to do. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. What I do find an issue with is when influencers don't always disclose that, because think of a 13-year-old girl interested in Sugar Rush, and she doesn't know that her favorite influencer was paid to talk about that or was brought on a brand trip. She thinks that this influencer got the trip with her hard-earned money, and she was like, wow, I need to have a body like that and go to beaches like that in order to be pretty or successful. And it's just that transparency in advertising that kind of walks a funny line. I don't know if you technically have to disclose a gift that you got from a different brand. For instance, if Tarte sends a Givenchy or Dolce & Gabbana purse, the influencer might not have to disclose that because it's considered a gift and it's not to promote this brand. But you can also see where getting $10,000 worth of shoes and handbags might influence how somebody speaks about a product. Again, we hope not, but also we have to just recognize human nature exists. I'm not here to expose anybody, but there are other influencers that I know who have received very similar gifts, who wear them around, show them off as if they bought them with their own money, but they were gifts. Yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> I think that because Tarte Cosmetics has so much corporate capital, they can do this. And again, I don't think that's a bad thing. That is business, that is how it works. Back in the day, magazine editors used to get taken out to parties and given expensive gifts and shoes and jewelry to promote products. Like that is how the beauty industry world kind of started with magazines. So it's not a bad thing. What's bad is people taking that, running with it, not disclosing it properly and letting that impact the way they feel about a brand or a product. Which, to be totally honest, I don't know whether or not that's happening right here. But some of the products are great, some of the products are hit and miss. The other thing we have to talk about is pricing. Again, not for the makeup, but for the skincare, I would say they're reasonably priced. Some products I think could be a little bit overdone, but like these Blemish Bully concealers are $14. They last me pretty long. $20 to $30, maybe $40 for some of your skincare products. Like those are Sephora prices. That's not absolutely terrible to me. Do all of the products and all of the formulas merit that $40 price tag? No. But again, it's kind of hit and miss between those different products. The other thing you have to keep in mind is that Tarte has a ton of sales. Yes, they are sold at Sephora and at Ulta. Go buy them from TarteCosmetics.com because they have a sale literally every freaking day. Sometimes they have 30% off. I've seen it up to 50% off. I've seen 70% off of certain products. Don't pay full price for these, okay? You can get them for cheaper unless you're in a country where they don't ship to and you have to go to a third-party seller like Ulta or Amazon, do it. But like, look for those discount codes and honestly, wait for the discount codes because they are always on sale. Who is Tarte Cosmetics for? This is also kind of confusing. When they first started, again, back in 1999, it kind of sounds like they were for the conscious mother, the lady who wanted to feel glam. They had that Park Avenue princess bronzer. They wanted to feel beautiful, but also do something good for the planet, which is why they donated to the Amazon. Then, back when I was first introduced to the line because I bought all of it at Sephora, it kind of felt like the college girl. Again, a lot of their products were natural, all cruelty-free. Most of them were vegan. They were were a little bit expensive, but it was like, you know, college girls would have in their little makeup cases and put in the gym locker. Now, it kind of seems like it's been getting younger and younger. I know that Sugar Rush is technically their preteen line, but the quality that Tarte has been putting out and the marketing that they've been putting out, it just feels like now it's like Visco Girl Teenager, which again isn't a bad thing, but to me it's kind of confusing because it's like, wait, we're all growing up, but the line is growing down? Like, does anybody else feel like their demographic has gotten younger? And again, my theory for the reason that this is happening is because the younger generation, Generation Z, has gotten a lot of media and a lot of press for being hyper consumers. Generation Z has been known to purchase products, and if you look at marketing blogs, and if you have a VPN, a virtual private network, and you set that to a country like Japan, you can kind of see how articles are different in different places in the world. It's really interesting how governments, how cultures, and communities filter what they say based on different countries. But let me tell you, in Japan, the young Young consumer is what everyone in marketing is kind of going after. And I wonder if this is just a coincidence that I am drawing or if this is actually something that has merit to it. But I feel like Tarte Cosmetics has been targeting younger and younger in their demographics. I also feel like they're not innovating, they're not changing, they're not doing anything revolutionary. Like, 
okay? But what they are doing is launching these sister brands, just trying to pick up more market share, which is smart, it's intelligent, but please just be more friendly with your packaging. When it comes to the skincare and the key products I talked about, I love these. The vitamin C line was disappointing from a packaging perspective, and because like it oxidized, the under eye creams are horrible, I do not recommend them. A lot of the skincare products are hit and miss. The one thing is that Tarte does have the Drink of H2O moisturizer. It's actually a really good moisturizer, and it's a dupe for the Clinique Moisture Surge, and for the Neutrogena Hydro Boost. Basically, a lot of people who are on Accutane for acne have horrible, horrible skin dryness, and Clinique Moisture Surge is usually recommended because of its lightweight texture and its supreme hydration. However, the ingredients aren't all that great. Clinique is kind of an outdated brand from a branding perspective. And on top of that, they're not cruelty free. They test on animals. So Tarte Cosmetics is an amazing dupe for that product that I would highly recommend. And I do recommend where people are looking for advice and saying, I am on Accutane, I need a good option that is also cruelty free. What I do like about Tarte Cosmetics that I have participated in is their kiss and makeup campaign. It's basically donation to end cyberbullying and online bullying. And most of my personal history with bullying had to go around my skin and it was in person, but the online world can be ruthless. And if you don't have thick skin, it's really hard to deal with. And even if you do have thick skin, it's really hard to deal with. And as we know, online bullying is a huge issue from self-esteem to feelings of safety and security to people taking their own lives, which I'm very happy that Tarte has used their platform, their reach and their influence to raise awareness about. So that campaign is something I'm happy to participate in and I'm really happy they do. I think they do it just about every year. I hope that does not change anytime in the future. And I hope that some of their sister brands such as Sugar Rush start to do things like that as well. The question is, can you go back to your roots of like this Amazonian clay that you claim to put in your makeup and can you actually start protecting the Amazon? Because if we all remember back to August of last year, it was on fire. We need to stand up and protect Mother Earth and the animals and people, children. We, with voices, need to lend those to the voiceless. I really hope that brands do that as well because it's 2020 and it is not okay to have a brand that claims to love the Amazon and uses Amazon themes in their products and in their packaging, but doesn't actually do anything to help the issue. That I have a problem with. The way I first found out about Tarte Cosmetics was purchasing them in stores. I was told that they were more natural. I used to love their, um, what was it? I think it was like the Tarte Amazonian face tinted moisturizer. I don't even remember what it was called. That covered my acne. And at that time, I wasn't as intelligent about skincare ingredients. I was afraid of a lot of ingredients. I was trying to use more natural products. And guess what the people at Sephora sold me? Natural products from Tarte Cosmetics. I really loved their foundation stuff when it comes to makeup. Um, their blushes I was obsessed with because they were more natural. They weren't supposed to break me out. Again, a lot of my life was living in fear of breakouts, which as an adult, I can process and understand the emotional pain and trauma behind that. But while you're going through it, it's really hard to rationalize. And I'm so happy that Tarte makeup and then Tarte skincare were a part of that journey in me understanding products, looking at ingredients, making choices that were cruelty free that matched my morals and values as I grew both as a consumer and as a person. And again, it was actually really flattering when Tarte started reaching out to me and started sending me PR because again, there's three levels of PR. There are those boxes with the memes on the inside and full of goodies that, by the way, I give to you guys on Fridays at 5 p.m. on Facebook. If you didn't know that, we do giveaways almost every single week, but that's like level one. Level two are these influencer parties that you're invited down to, usually to LA too, and you know, it's kind of like a big Instagram and product gifting fest. And then there's like level three where you're invited to these exclusive resort vacations and given designer handbags and shoes, etc. Again, some of those designer handbags are leather, and Tarte is a proudly cruelty-free brand with a lot of vegan products. Can y'all not focus on giving away some cruelty free stuff? Like why are you going to make products that are cruelty free and most of them are vegan? And then you're going to go spend corporate marketing money on leather for influencers. That again is just me being hypersensitive. But again, those of us with voices need to stand up for the voiceless. And that includes humans, children, animals, and the planet. And that's what I have to say about that.
So overall, does the skincare portion of Tarte Cosmetics get the cast pass? The answer in this case is yes. Again, the morals and values are there. The quality is generally good. The pricing is pretty decent. Some of the products are hit and miss. Some of the packaging is probably the worst part, really needs some help. But Tarte Cosmetics has never attacked people online. They've never lied and sold their products in China, trying to claim that they're still cruelty free. Overall, they do get the cast pass. And again, this is one of my favorite spot treatments to date. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend you do. When it comes to the makeup, whether or not that gets a cast pass is to be debated because it's a little tricky, but we can talk about that in another video. If you liked this one, make sure that you that like button and don't forget to whoosh, that subscribe button if you haven't already. More videos talking about these stories, ingredients, and things nobody will tell you about these brands can be found right here, and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.